guys. Happy Sunday. Um, it is our very first soup Sunday. Last Sunday we put up a post asking what you guys wanted to see and such good feedback. Uh, we really did. We got a lot of people writing different things. Some soups that I actually never even tried making. So I'm going to do two soups this Sunday, two soups next Sunday, and two soups the following Sunday. So that's six full soups. Um, they're all very different. I tried to match up what I thought was similar. Um, not similar, opposite. I mean, like, um, if I did like a chicken based soup, I would do like a heavy Italian soup or a cream based, blah, 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 blah. So today, it's our first Sunday, we are gonna do, I'm looking over here because I have it all ready to go, pasta fazool. And we are gonna do matzo ball, which matzo ball is like one of my favorites. So I love making matzo ball. Um, pasta fazool, I'm hoping it's a crowd pleaser because my kids love beans, Bill loves pasta. And beans with lots of cheese. Lots of cheese is gonna go in the soup. Um, let me show you what we're working with. Say it with me. You know you want to. It's all in the prep. It is all in the prep. And we're gonna bang out these soups. Let me show you what we got. This is everything I got ready for my pasta fazool and my matzo ball. So first thing we're gonna do is get the matzo dough going because I need to get that resting while we make the other stuff. So we're gonna go back and forth. You can message me for the recipe. You can follow along with the video. All right, matzo ball. I bought matzo meal. Um, this is the brand I've used before. Super easy pour spout. That's what, honestly the reason because when I pack, put it back in the cupboard, because we're only gonna use one cup. So we're gonna measure out one cup, makes me around 10 matzo balls. I'll show you what I have in our bowl. I put the one cup of matzo. Um, I have four eggs one cup of water, quarter cup of oil, salt and pepper. I'm gonna mix this all together. Um, and then I'm gonna let it sit in the fridge with a damp paper towel on it for around a half an hour to 45 minutes when we get everything else ready so that it can come together. Obviously I have the camera down so I can mix it for real. All right, I mixed it really well with a wooden spoon. Actually I took a um, non-thick spat and kind of turned the dough to make sure that I wasn't missing any. So I'm gonna put a piece of uh, wet paper towel. Actually, I'm gonna do plastic wrap and pop this in the fridge. Soup 101, the basics. Onion, carrots, and celery. Pretty much 99% of the time the base for all soups. So, they're known as the holy trinity. When working on your soups or doing your soups, there's really no right or wrong way to cut the size. If some people like chicken noodle with big hunks of carrots. I personally like cubes. I hate getting a soup when the carrot's in a circle. Um, it's just personal taste. Um, so I'm gonna dice, a nice medium dice for the matzo ball soup, carrot, celery, and onion. And just so you know, always have a waste bucket. Makes my life easier. I peel the carrots right in there. I dice my onions and throw the scraps in there. And then I have another bucket for all the finished stuff. Um, work smarter, not harder kind of thing. And make just makes it easy for cleanup. Just dump the bowl out. So what I mean by like a medium dice is, let's just say I take my carrot, cut it in half. I'm gonna cut it in half again. And I'm just gonna go, it's not a perfect square. It's just a nice medium dice. Um, kind of matches the celery and the onions that I did so that everything kind of cooks consistently. Now, in traditional matzo ball soup, sometimes, I don't know if it's traditional, some matzo ball soup I've seen, especially like when you go to a good Jewish diner or something like that, or deli, they um, they don't have carrots and celery and onion in them. Sometimes they have noodles, sometimes just broth in the matzo ball. I like it kind of a play on chicken noodle soup but I don't put big pieces of chicken in there. I actually just use chicken broth, so you can make this vegetarian with vegetable broth. And I do um, thick bucatini pasta. Just, it's hearty and, and the matzo ball is cooked perfectly. Like it just, it's delicious. So um, this is gonna be chicken free. If I was making, if I like took a whole half a chicken and I cut it, I'd boil it to make the stock. We're actually gonna use Swanson's um, chicken broth to get this going. So carrots are done. I'm gonna use a stock pot around this big, just because I want the water to boil and move around. It sounds like our oil's hot. Um, 
and move around so the matzo balls have room to cook. So, carrot, celery, onion, has around a quarter cup of good olive oil on the bottom, and we're gonna get this veg sweating. Pretty much gonna be the base and start for most of our soups that we do on here for soup Sundays. Next, we're gonna get our pasta fazool going. So I bought my pancetta pre-diced. This is gonna be me cooking at home to make my life easier for my kids. But at the same time, you could go buy a piece of pancetta, you can use bacon, um, but you want a nice dice, we're gonna render that down with the fat. I'm doing the white beans, and the big debate with pasta fazool is white or red. I love it red. So I have a can of tomato sauce and a can of diced tomatoes. I got my pasta and my herbs. Let's start peeling these veggies. Okay, so this is why I'm not a crock pot believer of soups because the whole point is building those layers of flavor and building the base of a soup. And this is where it starts, right here. The carrot, celery, and onion. See that liquid and how they're becoming translucent? Is all the sweetness in these veggies that are starting to cook out. And now it's gonna be in the broth. If you just dumped a bunch of stock or water in your veggies and boiled, you're not gonna get that same sweet, rich flavor that you start when you start like this. Okay, at the kitchen, you guys have seen, we make our own stock there. We also go through so many more veggies there. Um, but I love the Swansons. I buy the unsalted because that gives me the power to season the soup up the way I want. So, pouring in our stock. I've used the fully salted ones, and sometimes, you know what, you go to season your soup and it's a little salty. Um, but I do not buy the fat-free one because fat is flavor. All right, I do add a little bit of oil, even though we're gonna render down the fat. <laughs> because I love olive oil. All right, I'm gonna get the pancetta in. And you know what? I'm gonna scrape it all kind of in the middle here, and I'm gonna let it start to cook down. We'll lower the heat, but I'm not gonna stir too much, because I do want it to get a little crispy, and I want all that fat to cook off. Who's with me, people? There is nothing better than the smell of bacon or pancetta or any good, fatty, salty pork product. It's like a pork facial. So delicious. Render down and our veggies. Get this sweating. All those flavors mixed together. Um, so I opened up my cans and here's my thing. I'm not draining them. I want the liquid from the beans to help thicken up the sauce and I leave the liquid from the tomatoes, the diced tomatoes, because it just tastes good. Okay, really quick, I wanna make a disclosure. Um, I've said it a million times, but I really mean, especially on these like days that we do like quote unquote recipes, where I show you how I cook something from start to finish. This is my way. I didn't open up a recipe book, a cookbook. I didn't Google a recipe. This is how I've learned to cook through other people, through learning on my own, trial and error. So it's also the way I like to eat and my family likes to eat. So if you disagree with something I'm doing, don't do it. Do something else. If you want to use ground turkey instead of pork or you don't want to put carrots and celery in your soup, whatever you want to do, I'm just showing you my flavors, how I like to cook, which personally is just excellent. So I think you should follow the way I'm doing it. As you can see, I'm going to let them saute. Oh my God, the smell of the rosemary just like hit me. It was awesome. Um, as this cooks, we add the liquid, it's all gonna cook apart, and then at the end, we'll just pull the stems out. Oh, hold on, I almost forgot. I put two bay leaves in as well. Um, and if anyone's wondering why I'm hunched down, I am home alone this Sunday, and it's fantastic. My husband has the kids at sports, so I don't wanna film for me, so I look a little short lady today, even though I'm actually pretty tall. Um, so, here we go. Rosemary, thyme, the pancetta. Love this stuff. Next, putting in our diced tomatoes. I buy the petite dice for soups because no one really wants to get a big chunk in their mouth. And I do half a can right now with it, just a tomato sauce. And I'm gonna do two beans, cannelloni beans. You can do white and red, you can do, I'm just doing white though, with that liquid. I'm gonna grab a spoon and scrape these out. That's all in the pot. Now we're gonna add a stock the stock, and I'm also gonna be adding in around three cups of water because we're gonna cook our pasta in here and that's gonna absorb some of this liquid. 
So I really want to make a flavorful broth, but I want to give enough so that it can cook. So this was 32 ounces of the chicken stock, and now I'm going to add around three cups of just regular water. All right, everything's inside my soup. I'm going to put this on low simmer with the lid and let this go for around 45 minutes before we add our pasta. We want to get it to a rolling boil to add our pasta. All right, our soup, that's the matzo ball soup. Um, it's at a boil, and this has been in the fridge for 45 minutes, and we're gonna form our balls in there. So I'm gonna put you here, and um, you can do it with your hands. So let's take the lid off. So it's on a nice boil. You can wet your hands and make the balls like that. That's like the old fashioned way of doing it. Um, but I've learned taking a scooper, you know me, I love my scoopers, and going in, I'm able to put this into the water and scoop the ball out. So once again, let me see if I can do this at a different angle. So I'm wetting my scooper. I'm coming here, scooping. And then into the soup, I'm getting it a little wet before I release it. And you see how it floats down? So this should give you very consistent balls. And they'll float to the top. And these are gonna cook in here for around a half an hour. It's gonna keep going. I'm hoping to get around 10 to 12 balls out of this. Just because I don't want really big balls for, this is, you didn't know what I was talking about. Interesting conversation for anyone to walk in on. All right, so all my matzah's in there, and here's the trick. You don't want to be stirring it right now. You want it to naturally cook in the, in the liquid simmering for half an hour so you don't break up the matzah and it sticks together. So I'm gonna put the lid sideways on here so that it doesn't, you know, overboil. but I'm gonna set a timer for half an hour and then we'll salt and pepper it up. So we're on a pasta bazool now because the matzah balls are cooking half an hour. This has been simmering for around 40 minutes. And I just want to show you that, like, what I was talking about with the herbs, the fine sticks. See how the herbs are naturally just ah, caliente coming off of there? Um, and at the end, we'll pick them through. But I'm trying to get it to a boil so that we can cook our pasta. I'm going to use the traditional style. You can use elbow. You can use whatever kind of pasta you have. Um, but we're going to season it up first. So I'm going to take some out so I can try it, find out how much salt we need, salt and pepper, bring it up to a nice boil, and then add our pasta. I'm not going to over salt it because we're going to add a little parmigiano in it. Mm. Getting there. All right, added the parm, salt and pepper, just so you can see from this view. It smells outrageous. I'm going to get back in my pot. So, I'm going to stir this and then get it to a nice boil so we can add our pasta. And you can see how much liquid from this point to when we're done, the pasta's gonna absorb. So we're gonna full boil, and I normally don't really measure, but I'm gonna put, for this pot, around three handfuls of pasta in. And the starch in the pasta is gonna thicken it, that sauce, the, the liquid that's with the beans is gonna, I'm gonna do one more extra line too. Let me stir it so it doesn't stick to the bottom. And everything here, the white bean, the starch and the pasta is gonna thicken this up. And I've already seasoned it. So once the pasta's cooked, I'm gonna shut the heat, put it on the side, and pull up my stands and bay leaf. But, yeah. Our matzo balls have cooked up beautifully. I am adding some fresh parsley. I salt and peppered the broth, and I'm gonna slowly turn it. See our veggies. We have perfect matzo ball soup. Should keep you warm on any cold day. Hope you guys enjoy. Perfect. Okay, pasta fazool is done. Check out the pasta, the beans, the tomatoes. Seasoned up this broth perfectly, and we pulled out all the stems and the bay leaves. So now you can see like the fresh herbs that are in there. And we're gonna add the pisto rizid stones to the best part at the end. Yeah, little oh, parm. And you serve it with a big piece of bread and some fresh parm and black pepper right on top. 
need a glass of red wine and sip of the fireplace right 